no suture no glue still fixated eye wire on either side of the cornea two radial cuts are made 180 degree apart up involving approximately 50% of the scleral thickness using a 1 mm to 1.5 mm keratome blade scleral tunnels are made parallel to the limbus on on either side from the radial cut which was made earlier a superior scleral tunnel is constructed by inserting the eye wire into the anterior chamber using a 24 gauge intramuscular needle a entry into the vitreous cavity is made approximately 1 to 1.5 mm from the limbus at the radial cut which was made earlier either a foldable or a rigid eye wire is inserted through a superior corneal tunnel and using a either a 23 gauge or a 25 gauge max grip alcon forceps the haptics are held by this forceps and pulled out of the eye or externalized of the out of the eye using this mivs forceps then the externalized haptics are then held using the macpherson forceps and inserted into the scleral tunnels which were constructed earlier on either side of the cornea this shows the actual surgical video as you can see two radial cuts were made on either side of the cornea 180 degrees apart involving half the thickness of the sclera using a 1.3 mm keratome the scleral tunnels are made parallel to the limbus adjacent to the limbus for beginners if they find it difficult to construct the tunnel under the conjunctiva the conjunctiva can be opened and this tunnel can be made under direct visualization right side tunnel runs from up to down and the left side tunnel runs down to up to accommodate for the angulation of the haptics which will, which will be externalized and internalized into the scleral tunnel later care should be taken that the tunnel is neither too superficial nor too deep and if, if you have a difficulty as i said earlier the conjunctiva can be open and this can can a tunnel can be constructed under direct visualization to maintain the globe pressure during the surgery when anterior chamber maintainer is placed and this helps to maintain the globe tonus throughout the surgery in this case because we are inserting a foldable eye wire a 3 mm keratome is used to construct a corneal tunnel now either using a 24 gauge intramuscular needle or in this case we are using the uh, trocar blade which is used for mivs surgery a 25 gauge trocar blade is used to clear the sclerotomy approximately 1 to 1.5 mm from the limbus at the ridge which was made earlier a proper anterior vitrectomy is essential and the loaded foldable eye wire is then injected into the anterior chamber as the leading haptic is injected into the anterior chamber this is held with the with the 25 gauge mivs forceps this particular case we are using a alcon grishaber max grip forceps which gives good strength in holding the haptic so the haptic is held with the forceps and care should be taken to hold the exact tip of the haptic this is the right thing to be done if you see some part of the haptic jutting out beyond the level of the forceps then as you are pulling out the haptic this can get kinked or in some rare cases fracture can happen so the eye haptic is then held and the eye wire optic is then released into the anterior chamber leaving the trailing haptic outside the anterior chamber the leading haptic is then pulled out of the eye and as you can see here there's a mild kink because a tip was not held properly this can be ironed out by using a 
switch are holding forceps. A paracentesis is made so that a handshake technique can be used to hold the other haptic. The first, the IOL haptic is fed into the anterior chamber using a metpherson and held by a similar forceps from the opposite paracentesis. Now, the max grip forceps is inserted through the sclerotomy on the right side and the very tip is held properly and then externalized. So sometimes when you're injecting a foldable eye veil, the lens can get flipped, that is the upper side can go down. So the haptics will be something like this, facing in the opposite direction. So what you have to do is, hold both the haptics using two MacPherson forceps and rotate it like a bicycle pedal simultaneously. This will flip the eye veil to the right orientation, as you can see here. The eye veil is flipped over to face the, so that the haptics face the right direction and these haptics can then be held with the MacPherson forceps and then internalized, that is in, inserted into the scale tunnel which was constructed earlier. Because this is a small tunnel, part of the haptic is first inserted and the forceps is released, brought back, held at the base and then haptic is further inserted into the scleral tunnel. The same procedure is then repeated on the either side, other side. The position of the haptic can be checked by rubbing the sclera and identify, identifying how far the haptic has been inserted into the scleral tunnel. The centration also can be observed by noting the centration of the optic in the pupillary area. So if you feel the optic is not properly centered or if the IOL seems to be decentered, then the IOL haptics can be inserted and uh, on one side and pulled out on the other side to accommodate for this decentration. If there is any leakage seen at the site of uh, uh, haptic externalization, vitriol can be used to suture the groove which was first made.